uh, I was told uh, by professors not to email student support because they were too overworked. To me, this is clearly an issue of understaffing this kind of role. Um, the University of Edinburgh has one of the highest rates of uh, casualization in the country. Contracts and ca casualization, so short term contracts. This is to put in parallel with the fact that senior management has very high salaries, very high benefits from the university. A lot of um, personal expenses are covered by the university funds. I would like to know if this is something that you will be willing to address. So thank you very much for, for, for that um, set of issues. I mean, there a couple of things I'd say. I'm of, I often say that to ask for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. That's the first thing I would say. Um, on casualisation and precarious work conditions, this is something we're very conscious of. We want to change the perception that Edinburgh is a, a, um, an irresponsible or um, somehow uh, um, not a generous employer. We've banned zero hour contracts. We do still have a lot of guaranteed hours contracts, a lot of people on fragile employment conditions. It's something we want to change. We have policies that are recognised by trade unions and others as being um, uh, sector leading. We recognise the issue and we're very keen to address it. We've been consistently ranked as one of the worst universities in terms of student satisfaction as far as the Russell Group, and mental health is one of the leading causes in terms of student decline. D just this past October, USA held its uh, elections, and we elected four out of eight campaign representatives who were specifically talking about mental health as their campaign pledge. That's half of them. One of whom specifically highlighted suicide prevention of students. Furthermore, the mental health counseling services, there's a five-week waiting period in order to access the counseling services. This is completely unacceptable. So my question is, what are you doing to ensure that the counseling service is able to provide for the students in a shorter period of time? And what are you doing to ensure that there is proactive engagement in students so they don't have to rely on counselling services to the same degree that they already do. I think there's a few things I want to say. So I don't want to sound like excuses because we've still got a, lot, a long way to go. But I guess what I wanted to say is, is that we are heavily investing in that area. So there's two, two areas where we're looking at that. So the first one you mentioned about um, proactive approaches. Uh, that's a big part of our student support model. We have a student wellbeing service. That service is incredibly important. So we're learning about that service and how it's working um, and how we can um, continue to, to deliver a better service to our students. But also how we can be more proactive. Um, so you may have seen more events taking place across the campuses. We had um, we have with the more wellbeing walks, we've had more stands up and more the second one is around the, the council services. This is something that we are very privileged to be able to offer at the university and it is because we recognise how supportive we need to be for our students. That is something that we want to go in above and beyond for and I think we do but we've still got further, further to go. Albemarle is a chemical company which is, has supplied the USA, other militaries and is currently supplying the Israeli military with white phosphorus for rockets. The existing policy of the university explicitly says that the university will not invest in controversial weapons and amongst other things white phosphorus is specifically listed as a controversial weapon. So yeah, I would like a general response about the divestment campaign and my specific question is about this specific uh, investment and how it can possibly comply with the existing policy. The University of Edinburgh is proud of its record of divestment in other areas, particularly in, in fossil fuel um, companies. The events in Israel and Palestine bring another dynamic to, to investments and divestments. Or well, someone I, I listened to on the radio was asked a question about supplying um, weapons to Israel. And the minister's answer was that the UK government doesn't supply weapons to Israel, but um, there will be some British companies that do. So you know, there is a question for the UK, I think, in terms of national policy around investment in weapons. I mean, I don't know uh, the details of 
uh, whether we have a policy on white phosphorus or not.